Silk is considered one of the finest fabrics globally, and it's expensive because it has limited availability, meaning that it really is something that not every country can produce, and it is something that is limited. Hi, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. Today we're going to talk about fabric. Yes, we're going to talk about fabric, that material that you have to for your clothes and tablecloths and all host of other things because so many things are made out of fabric. In today in particular, I want to talk a little bit about silk and why silk fabric is expensive and then some of the things that silk can be used for. If you're going to be purchasing any type of product, whether it's a product that uses fabric or you're going to be, you know, decide you're going to design some clothing, you're going to design some home decor, you're going to design anything that could use fabric, it's important that you understand a lot about the fabric that you're going to be using. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about silk, just because I really love silk, and I think silk is quite an interesting fabric. You know, silk is considered one of the finest fabrics globally, and it's expensive because it has limited availability, meaning that it really is something that not every country can produce, and it is something that is limited. This is going to be true for anything you're going to be buying for a product. If it has a limited availability, there usually will be a premium price attached with it. It has to do with the principle of supply and demand. You know, extracting silk from the cocoon proteins is actually a very expensive and labor-intensive process. It takes 5,000 silk worms to produce one kilo of silk. Let me repeat that because I think that's an amazing statistic. 5,000 silkworms to produce one kilo of silk. That means that you need to have a lot of silkworms to be able to produce your silk tie, your silk scarf, your silk jacket, or, or whatever it is. You know, totally around the world, there's about 168,000 kilograms of silk that's produced yearly. That's, you know, equal to somewhere around you know, over 300,000 pounds. China still continues to be the largest producer of silk, and they produce over 126,000 kilograms. You know, behind that is actually Vietnam and India, but you can see that theirs is still quite a bit less than China, which produces probably about 75% of all the silk in the world is coming from China. The production of silk is extremely labor intensive. You know, they have to, the silk has to be, you know, uh, you have to have the caterpillars to spin the cocoons and you have to harvest it. You have to extract the silk threads from the cocoon. And actually all of these caterpillars have to eat what's called a mulberry tree. So, you know, the mulberry trees are also limited in their supply. So all of this helps to be able to limit a product like silk and, it, and it, it means that it's extremely labor intensive to produce. It also means that silk production is a relatively slow process. It is a very old process that's been around for thousands of years. And really a lot of the processing hasn't changed that much in that amount of time. So silk is one of these things which really is extremely labor intensive. What's fascinating about silk is there's so many things that you can make out of silk or things in the past that have been made out of silk that it's really a quite a versatile fabric. So, you know, here are some things that can be made out of silk. Of course, you know, fashion is one of the industries which is used a lot for silk. You know, everything from silk shirts and ties and blouses. If you're interested to see a list, I've written a blog about it, what things are made from silk, and you can see a list of a lot of the basic products that are still made from silk today. You know, silk pajamas, silk jackets, silk scarves, silk ties. 
you know, also for the home decor industry, any of you that are in the home decor industry, like I am, you know, the course are silk, you know, pillows, silk cushions, um, silk quilts and comforters, pillowcases, lampshades, upholstery fabric, silk curtains. A lot of people still use silk curtains, silk blankets. Um, it's used for silk wallpaper, silk wall coverings and trimmings. And even jewelry has been made out of silk. You know, there's some interesting uses of silk that I never even knew existed, which I want to talk about because it shows how sometimes innovative people can be about things or how people were in the past. In the past, a lot of people used silk for parachutes. And the reason why they used silk was because silk was a lightweight fabric and it was extremely strong. Of course, today the parachutes are made of nylon, but in the past, you know, silk was used to be able to make parachutes. Silk was also used for gunpowder bags. I had no idea about this. But the reason was is because when you had the gunpowder for the bullets, you know, you didn't want to have it in your pocket. You didn't want to have it in some other bags that, that you know, could have problems. So they would put gunpowder in these small little silk uh, pouches so that the gunpowder wouldn't rub together and explode. So it was used as a way to be able to protect the gunpowder. Today, silk is being used in bike tires. You know, for a long time, bike tires have been using cotton, but there's been um, some silk has been used for these casings of high-end, um, you know, track tubular tires for the racing bikes. And several of the people that have used these have said that they really love silk because silk has made for a lot smoother ride than the cotton ones. I find this fascinating because I myself am a cyclist and I enjoy cycling. And I had no idea that there were bicycle tires that are really considered premium bicycle tires again, but because they're more expensive than, of course, the other variety. But there are many of the professional bike racers now who have been saying that they prefer to have the silk tires. Because I'm a lover of history, I want to also tell a little history or, or something that I find fascinating about silk. And if anyone has been to Thailand, you need to stop by and you need to see the Jim Thompson house there. And Jim Thompson came to Thailand in the 40s, I think it was during World War II. And, you know, he was sort of a bit of a, um, he was a creative person. He'd been an architect and he began to see the silk weavers there in Bangkok. And he started to design fabrics for them and began to say, hey, I think the fashion houses in New York would be interested in this. And they were. And so he built up quite a, a very good silk business there. So even still today in Thailand, you can visit the Jim Thompson House and you can find out and learn more about Jim Thompson. And you can also go and you can visit his shop there in Bangkok, Thailand. What is fascinating about this with Jim Thompson is not only today is he considered one of the top silk brands in the world for home furnishing, home decor, and fashion. And not only does he have many great designs that are still being used today, but in the 1960s, Jim Thompson disappeared from the highlands in Malaysia, and he was never found. His body was never found. And nobody knows exactly what happened to him. There are some people that think that maybe he was known to be a spy, and so he was killed as a spy because he had done some work, supposedly, for what would have um, been something like the CIA or done some secret service work. And there's other who think that maybe a tiger ate him. They're really, they do not know what happened to him. It was one of the largest manhunts ever in Malaysia to try to find him in the highlands, and they found no traces of him at all. He just disappeared off the face of the earth. But yet today, his legacy and his life continues to live on through the Jim Thompson brand and the Jim Thompson house, which is located in Bangkok, Thailand. So if you happen to go visit Bangkok, Thailand, do stop into the Jim Thompson shop, which is still on Sir Wong Road, and look at the amazing silk products that are being manufactured there. And also take the time to go see the Jim Thompson house, which is full of some wonderful Thai artifacts and is a wonderful Thai style house. His legacy of silk continues to live on through the Jim Thompson brand.
Well, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. We hope you've enjoyed a little bit of this information about a product known as Silk. If you enjoyed this, look at the link below and look at some of our recent uh, blogs that we've written about Silk. Also, tell your friends about us, subscribe to our podcast. We'd love to have you be part of our community. We'd love to have you join with us. And we really also appreciate you for listening. Thank you so much for listening and being part of our community. We truly do appreciate you.